in the last lecture we had started talking about implementation of quantum fourier transform and we had seen that for a one qubit case this is nothing but an ordinary hadamard transform and in case of two qubits we analyzed the situation and found that the implementation is done by having a hadamard transformation on one of the qubits and a uh, controlled phase rotation in on another qubit along with a hadamard transform the one should in principle one could go and find out what happens to n qubit uh, but the uh, mathematics becomes a little clumsy though straightforward so what i will do is instead of going to n qubits i will try to tell you how to extend it to 3 qubits and try to see whether there is a pattern which emerges out of this but before that let us uh, uh, review what we did in the last lecture for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 the slide here uh, shows for n is equal to 1 uh, this is this slide is for n is equal to 2 and you can see that what it requires is a hadamard transform on the uh, second qubit because i had 0 plus minus 1 to the power x 0 uh, 1 and a hadamard transform on the first qubit uh, minus 1 to the power x 1 uh, along with a controlled phase rotation i say it's a controlled phase rotation because the rotation is there only if x 0 is equal to 1 now that requires as i said last time that uh, we cannot change the value of the second qubit before we have uh, taken its value for application on the first qubit and that was done by realizing that what we need to do is to interchange x1 and x0 that is the msb and the lsb as one says in bit language and then apply the Hadamard gate we defined b12 gate last time which I will again have occasion to talk about today and this is the way one implemented qft for n is equal to 2. Now let us look at what is the situation with respect to n is equal to 3. Now if I have n is equal to 3 so 3 qubit case so we need to find out for x which is a shortened notation for writing x2 x1 x0 by definition of the Fourier transform my x tilde then is 1 over square root of 8 because I have 3 qubits sum over using the same notation as we have been using last time y2, y1 and y0 each taking the values 0 and 1. So, I have got a to the power 2 pi i x at the moment I do not expand x like I did last time and now I need to write down the y but then y is 4 y2 plus 2 y1 plus y0 divided by n which is equal to 8 in the uh, this case and I have the state y2, y1, y0. Now as before I will split this into 3 terms. So and I will <coughs> also distribute this 1 over square root of 8 as I did before. So I have 1 over square root of 2 sum over y2 equal to 0 1 e to the power 2 pi i x. So this is 4 y2 by 8 so therefore 4 y2 by 8 y2 then I have 1 over square root of 2 again sum over y 
belonging to 0 and 1 e to the power 2 pi i x this is 2 y 1 by 8. So, let us keep them like that because it is much easier to handle that way and of course y 1 and finally for the last qubit I have 1 over square root of 2. So, this is y 2 this is y 1 and I have y 0 belonging to 0 and 1 e to the power 2 pi i x and y 0 by 8. Now, let me look at each term in turn. So, let us look at the first term. This is 1 over square root of 2 sum over y 2 equal to 0 1 e to the power 2 pi i x 4 y 2 by 8. Let us split this term for y 2 equal to 0 the phase factor is 1. So, this is 1 over square root of 2 0 plus if y 2 is equal to 1. So, I get here e to the power 2 pi i x 4 by 8 is nothing but 2 1. This is the first term there and let us try to see what this term actually is. Now, this term is 1 over square root of 2 0. Now, you notice this is e to the power pi i x, but before we do that let us write down uh, expand x and see what is it. So, e to the power pi i x 1 since x is equal to 4 x 2 plus 2 x 1 plus x 0. Notice what I am getting here. I have e to the power this is the case for which uh, I have x 2 x 1 x 0 I have to write down and uh, each one of them can take value 0 and 1 irrespective of whether it is 0 or 1 you notice the following that I get e to the power 4 pi i x x, x 2. Now, e to the power 2 pi i as well as 4 pi i each will be equal to 1. So, therefore, both for x 2 and for x 1 taking the value 0 and 1 the prefactor here will become 1 and a phase factor which depends only on x 0. So, what I get is this that this is equal to 1 over root 2 0 plus e to the power 2 pi i x 0 by 2 well it is pi i x 0 same thing 1 and this is equal to 1 over square root of 2. 0 plus minus 1 to the power x 0 1. So, this was the first term. Let us look at what we get for the second term. So, the second term I had 1 over square root of 2 0 plus e to the power 2 pi i x by 4. 1. Once again since x is equal to 4 x 2 plus 2 x 1 plus x 0. So, this term I get e to the power 2 pi i. As before if x 2 is equal to 0 or x 2 equal to 1 I still get this prefactor to be equal to 1. But I have also these terms here. Now, look at what happens to this term. So, I have got 2 pi i, but then I have 2 x 1 by 4. So, that I get e to the power pi i x 1. Now, if x 1 is equal to 0, then of course, it is equal to 1. But if x 1 is equal to 1, then I get 
minus 1. So, I get 1 over square root of 2 0 plus minus 1 to the power x 1. I still have a phase left. I have a phase left which is e to the power 2 pi i x 0 by 4 1. So, how did we implement this? So, once again this is the Hadamard transform along with a phase rotation of 2 pi i of 2 pi x 0 by 4. We saw that these selective phase rotation why selective? Because unless x 0 is equal to 1, this phase rotation is not there. So, I need a controlled phase rotation when x 0 is the control. So, that I write down B, let us put the control over it. Now, I need to find out how much is this rotation and for that I had defined a controlled B j k gate where the phase was given by 2 pi divided by 2 to the power k minus j plus 1 with k greater than j. And I want this to be 2 pi by 4. So, therefore, you notice that if I take j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 1, I get 2 to the power 1 plus 1 that is 4. So, therefore, this is b x 0 0 1. So, this is the way this will be implemented. So, a Hadamard by a, this is Hadamard. That leaves us with the third term. So, we said y 0 equal to 0 1 e to the power 2 pi i x and let us expand the x 4 x 2 plus 2 x 1 plus x 0 into y 0 divided by 8 y 0. And as before I split it up into two terms y 0 equal to 0 and y 0 equal to 1. When y 0 equal to 0 of course, I get a 0 plus e to the power 2 pi i 4 x 2 plus 2 x 1 plus x 0 by 8 1. So, let us examine this again that this time you notice I have got here well once again if x 2 is equal to 0 then of course, I do not have anything from here because e to the power 0 is equal to 1. Now, if x 2 is equal to 1 then I get e to the power pi i 8 by 8. So, this term gives me 0 plus minus 1 to the power x 2. Let us come to x 1. Once again, if x 1 is equal to 0, I do not have any phase contribution. But if x 1 is equal to 1, I have a phase term which is e to the power pi 2 pi i x 1 by 4. And again for the third term what I have is 2 pi i x 0 by 8 1. Now, let us look at what these are. So, this as before is a Hadamard transform on the first qubit which is the x, x 2 qubit. Now, this one again is a controlled phase rotation and this time recalling that b j k has a phase of 2 pi by uh, 2 to the power k minus j plus 1. So, this phase term has a control which is x 1 because unless x 1 is equal to 1 I do not get that and it is b 1 2 because if j is equal to 1 k is equal to 2 I get 2 pi by 4 which is what I expect here and the this term is uh, 
the control is x0 in this case d x0 this time it is 0 too. So, if you collect all these together then what you are getting is one by root two zero plus minus one to the power x zero one we have seen that this is d zero one x zero zero plus minus one to the power x one one into 1 by root 2 again and this had 2 controlled b j k get 1 with the control x 0 and the second one with the control x 1 I had commented it on it last time, but look at uh, this slide which summarizes our results completely. Uh, so, the first term is uh, very simple. I have a Hadamard gate on the third qubit. Now, this is this is important to realize that the Hadamard gate is appearing on the last qubit x 0. And so, if I do that now to begin with, then I cannot use the value of x0 before application of these gates to be used as a control. So, I cannot do it. The second one is has a Hadamard gate with respect to the uh, second qubit, but again x0 being control, there is a phase rotation. And uh, this, so therefore, this can be implemented on the second qubit uh, by a controlled BJK as we explained little while back. The third term as we have seen is uh, a Hadamard on the first qubit and along with two controlled BJK operations. What it tells us is the following that we need to apply the gates in such an order that the control bits on b j k x i are not changed by transformation before uh, they are uh, applied. That is uh, I cannot change a particular x i and later on expect the same old x i to be used as a control. Now, what it requires is the following that in case of 3 qubits you interchange the first and the third qubit and this slide here explains to you how. See the thing is this that I have, so this is what I start with, I start with x2, x1 and x0 and uh, the second qubit remains without change and I interchange the locations of x0 and x1, x2. Now, so therefore, on this line I now carry x0 on this line I now carry x2. The middle line still remains uh, x1 as expected. So, now what I am doing now is pass the Hadamard. Now, when I am doing the Hadamard gate, I am actually doing a Hadamard on x2, which is my first term in the expansion that I showed you. After that, I need a x1 as the control and applied a b12 uh, the controlled bjk gate I told you and finally, on the same uh, x2 I use x0 as the control because this line is now x0 and apply a controlled b02 gate. So, therefore, x2 is now done and when I did that I did not change the values of x0 and x1 in the process because this is what I retained. Now comes the uh, action on my bit x1, but remember nothing has been done to x0. 
So, what I do is first apply the Hadamard gate on x1 which is what I required and then with the x0 as the control I use the d01 gate and having done all that I finally take up x0 and apply the Hadamard gate and what I get here now are my Fourier transform of the 3 cubic case. Now, what do you do now for n qubits? Now, in principle, this can be uh, generalized to n qubits by means of a process of induction. The algebra happens to be a little complicated, so therefore, I will not go into it, but let me sort of tell you what you actually do. What you actually do is to realize that the process can be essentially performed by a Hadamard followed by a sequence of BJK operation on that qubit. But before I do that, I must previously permute the original states. In this particular case of 3 qubit, you realize that if I uh, permuted x2, x1 and x0 and reverse them, the middle one remains the same. But for n qubit, it becomes a little more complicated and I permute them and keeping in mind that the order in which the control of the control bjk gate will appear will be different. And with that in mind, I can implement the Fourier transform corresponding to any number of qubits. So, in this lecture, what I have done is to tell you that the Fourier transform can be implemented by a unitary operation and by using basic gates which are my Hadamard gates and the controlled BJK gate. Each one of them can be implemented by a unitary operation. With this, we have completed our requirement for taking on the factorization problem. In the next lecture, we will be using these concepts that we have developed for uh, an algorithm which is known as source factorization algorithm.